Hi, my name is Jeff Kennedy. I'm a hydrologist at the U.S. Geological Survey's Arizona Water Science Center. Most of my job involves collecting and interpreting gravity data. Now, most of us understand that gravity is the force that pulls us down, that holds us to the Earth. But what's important to me as a hydrologist is that gravity varies from place to place and it changes over time. And we can use that information to better understand the processes at work under the Earth. A second thing we use gravity, for, gravity data for is to look at aquifer storage change over time. Aquifer storage increases through recharge, such as after a heavy rain when significant rainfall soaks into the ground. Aquifer storage decreases through things like groundwater pumping and discharge to springs and seeps. If we make repeat measurements of gravity over time, if gravity is increasing, it indicates increased aquifer storage because there's greater mass in the subsurface. On the other hand, decreasing gravity over time would indicate a decrease in storage. Looking northeast across the Tucson Basin at the Santa Catalina Mountains, this map shows gravity observations at 130 stations. The colors indicate the difference in gravity between 1999 and 2002. Red and orange colors indicate a decrease in gravity during this period and therefore a decrease in aquifer storage. Yellow and green colors indicate no change in aquifer storage. Not surprisingly, the largest decreases are in areas where local water providers withdraw groundwater. Looking to Avra Valley in the west, we see less gravity change in general and some increase in gravity where CAP water is actively recharged. Here at the Arizona Water Science Center, we have three different types of gravity meters that we used. The simplest is this relative gravity meter. This is a Burris gravity meter based on the Lacoste and Romberg design. This uh, particular design of meter has been built for several decades now um, with gradual refinements as it goes but it's one of the most sensitive mechanical instruments that's ever been built. It measures Earth's gravity field to approximately one part per billion. So a very small change in the Earth's gravity field it will sense. It's called a relative gravity meter because it doesn't tell us what Earth's gravity field is. It tells us the difference between two points. So if we take it to point A and make a measurement and take it to point B and make a measurement, we can know very accurately the difference in gravity between those points. But to know what the absolute value of gravity is, uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, we need a different instrument, which is this absolute gravimeter. This is the A10 absolute gravimeter. It's manufactured by Micro G Lacoste in Lafayette, Colorado. Uh, the way it works is pretty simple in principle. It just drops a mass that you can hear there inside a vacuum chamber, and it just measures how fast that mass accelerates, which is gravity. This lower can is the interferometer body. It houses a laser interferometer, which is the, the device that measures the position of the falling mass. Uh, the important first step in setting this up is to check how vertical it is. To do that, we use this optical instrument where we put a, a small alcohol pool inside this vertical beam checker. This alcohol pool will always be parallel to Earth's gravity field. So if we put it in there and bounce the laser beam off this alcohol pool, we can adjust this lower unit until it's perfectly vertical, perpendicular to Earth's gravity field. I guess I'm just fascinated by gravity because it's, it's easy to understand how it works. Every school child learns what gravity is and it, you, it's just intuitive. You, you, it's how fast something falls and that's essentially what this instrument's doing is it's measuring how fast something falls. But it, it fascinates me that we, we can measure it. It fascinates me that it changes over time and, and how useful it is to understand how aquifers work and, and what's below us, what's in the subsurface.